Welcome to our webinar on Practical and Concise Playbook for Most Wired Excellence. My name is Ed Marks, and I serve as the Chief Digital Officer for Tech Mahindra Health and Life Sciences and HCI. And we have an amazing and amazing webinar for you. I wish there was a webinar like this when I was a CIO, because you're going to hear from two of the top CIOs in the country talk about their most wired success. I'm going to minimize the amount of talk that I have, so I'm just going to just say welcome. We are live, and we do that for a couple of reasons, but the most important reason is we want to engage with you. So Lisa and Craig are more than willing to entertain questions that you might have, so just pop them in the little question window. I'll facilitate those, but otherwise, get set, because you're going to learn so much that's going to help you and your organization with Most Wired. Michelle. Awesome. Hi, everybody. I'm Michelle Patterson. I'm with Chime. I'm Vice President of Operations and the lead on the most Digital Health Most Wired program. Awesome. And so, Michelle, you're going to uh, show us a little bit about uh, the Most Wired program and a little some statistics. Yeah, I absolutely think so. So uh, first off, I'll just say, I just want to give a quick, quick overview of who Chime is as an organization. Chime leads the Digital Health Most Wired survey. So Chime is a nonprofit organization that serves CIOs and their teams uh, around the world. Uh, we have with over 5,000 members in 55 countries, including 10 chapters around the world. Uh, so what is the Digital Health Most Wired Survey? So we have acquired the survey in 2017 from the American Hospital Association with the goal to improve health and care worldwide through the optimal use of information technology. So the Digital Health Most Wired is an annual survey that we host that provider organizations of all types can complete, everything from an acute care setting to a long-term and uh, ambulatory everything in between. Each organization that participates receives a benchmark report, and we publish an industry trends report every year along with it. So on the next slide. So just talking a little bit about what the survey actually covers, there are eight segments that are cover every aspect of a technology used inside of uh, the provider organizations. It's everything from supply chain to patient engagement. There are 86 questions on this year's survey that are scored. There's an additional COVID section that we added this year um, that just reviews some of the COVID things. We're hoping to get some really nice data and trends out of that one. Uh, each, each question is scored based on the available response options and is weighted according, according to the level of capacity. And on the next one, slide. And then, so we implemented a level scoring system in 2019. Um, so what is a certified level? The certified level allows the organizations to go in and benchmark their level of adoption and outcomes that are achieved within their organization against uh, the industry. So each year our goal is to ensure that the industry standards continues to grow um, and our levels are solely based on an organization's raw score without influence or consideration for how it compares to other participants. So over the years, we've seen some nice, nice growth in the program. When we took it over, there were 628 surveys and it covered about 2,500 organizations in only one other country, which was the UK. As of last year in 2020, we had over 30,000 facilities that were represented in the survey um, and over 754 uh, surveys that were con compared along with 14 countries that we're now in. So this, on the next slide, the survey is currently open. It just opened last week during our spring forum. So the survey is officially open. PDFs are available on our website and you can request a link for your organization. The survey will stay open until uh, June 15th and then our notification and benchmarks happen in August and then our award celebration in October. That's a little wrap up of what the, what the survey is. And I'll turn it back over to you, Ed. All right, thanks, Michelle. And so let's jump right to the panel. So Craig, we'll start with you. Can you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about yourself and about your organization. Yeah, thank you, Ed. Uh, first, let me thank HCI Group and also Chime. And it's my honor to be on the stage with uh, Lisa and you and Michelle. Uh, so I am the Chief Information and Digital Officer at SCL Health. SCL Health is a 
multi-state IDN based out of Colorado. I've been here for two years. One thing that I do find interesting is my title is Chief Information and Digital Officer, and we're talking about digital health most wired. So I think there's a nice correlation with the evolution of the CIO role. Prior to that, I was with Carolina's healthcare system, now Atrium Health, for 21 years. When you look at the most wired, at Atrium, we were 17 years in a row, uh, earning a most wired designation, the most advanced the last few of those years. And here now at um, SCL Health, we're a level nine with most wired. Great, awesome. Lisa, tell us about yourself and your organization. Thanks, Ed. It's also my pleasure to be here. I wanna thank you and Craig uh, for joining me on the panel uh, and HCI for bringing us all together today. Um, I'm Lisa Stump. I'm the Chief Information Officer for the Yale New Haven Health System and the Yale School of Medicine. Uh, I've been with our organization uh, for almost 25 years. Uh, started my career here as a clinical pharmacist uh, and worked my way uh, through a variety of roles, um, but with my passion for the use of technology to support healthcare, uh, landed myself here uh, in the CIO chair um, and really pleased um, and, and continue to be incredibly excited uh, about what's before us um, and to talk to you today about how the Most Wired Award helps uh, us think through that process. All right, awesome. So Lisa, let's continue with you. So there's a lot of measures, right, that you, a lot of programs you can participate in. Why, has, uh, why have you and your organization uh, gone forward with Most Wired? Thanks, Ed. You know, it, there are many measures, uh, and I think we, we do use a few uh, to think about where we sit uh, in terms of the industry, you know, best practices and standards. Um, you know, it was touched on uh, in the earlier slides, the, the detailed level of the survey segments uh, and the, the detail within each of those segments, I find a really helpful framework uh, that most Wired brings forward. Uh, and gives us a level of granularity to really understand where our opportunities are uh, to continue to advance our use of technology uh, to support the care and the business. Uh, the, the benchmarking uh, and that detailed level to me are, are some key differentiators uh, around the most wired process. Awesome, and Craig, same question to you because you've been a long time user as well. As you mentioned, uh, now the Atrium, you use most wired for a long time at Atrium and now at SCL. So, uh, what are the benefits? Why do you like to use it? Yeah, it really is for several reasons, but one is it's a roadmap. It allows you the opportunity to focus your work and be very disciplined with how you develop the different projects to move forward with. The advancement of the most wired over the last couple of decades and where it is today is really kind of a progression of our industry. And now with a lot of focus on digital and actually digital in the word itself of earning the most wired designation. At the same time, there's other things that uh, we do as well in terms of if you're an Epic client, you have Gold Stars and Honor Roll, uh, you have Chims with uh, or Hims with MRAM, and those are other things too that kind of feed off each other. So as you kind of take a look to see how the industry is evolving, how your peers and the leaders have defined how you really ought to be progressing, it allows you to be able to not only take the work that you're doing but to apply it with the different business and clinical and get the best outcomes. And that really is part of why we do this in order to really kind of move the bar and achieve our uh, strategic goals. Yeah, and I like the point, Craig, that you made with the how the CIO role is evolving to CDO. Uh, Most Wired also is evolving the survey uh, mm -hmm. to, to digital uh, as well, uh, right along with that, so that's great. And we did note a, a comment from one of our attendees that they love the the changes in the program and the levels and the numeric representation, Michelle. So great job uh, with Chime. So Craig, let's continue with you and then we're gonna ask the same question of Lisa. And that is, tell us about your C-suite participation or engagement. Like, are they aware of most wired? And if they are, you know, is it a big deal? Is it important to them? Do they ask about, you know, those sorts of things? Yeah, you know, they are aware, uh, totally aware. It's, a, it's kind of a badge of honor for the healthcare system because it's not an IT award it's your health system award. And when you look at all the health systems across the country, or in this case, really across the globe, those that have that designation have a certain level of accomplishment that maybe some others do not. And so when you compare and contrast, and you look to see how you're moving forward, it's kind of like getting the magnet award, you know, for one of your hospitals. It really is something that the whole system 
can be very proud of because it's just not one division that makes it happen. It really takes everybody to change those outcomes and to move the health system forward. So it is definitely front and center. And so we're very proud as we're kind of going through the different stages. And I think the way that Michelle and the team have simplified the most wired over, over the years is really nice on the scale. So it's exactly where you're at and every year it keeps advancing. So it continues to raise the bar, and allow you to move forward. And the health system is making a very large investment in technology today. And with that, then you're able to show some of the outputs or some of the rewards and reap the benefits of those investments. Yeah. So uh, Lisa, similar question, but I'm, I'm gonna change it slightly on you because we're we're gonna get uh, try to give some practical advice here. So uh, on engaging, sure. so Craig shared exactly the reason why you want that engagement. Uh, what are some ideas on how? So let's just say potentially your health system doesn't have that engagement yet. So any advice on mm -hmm. how you might get it? Yeah, I think it's a nice twist. Um, you know, I, I I take the opportunity when we get the award and the detail, you know, again, the, the granularity around each of the survey segments. And I sit with the president of our health system and I, and I go through it um, and explain, one, why we can be proud of the organization that we serve. Two, how we are using the investment in technology and IT uh, against that roadmap. I think it's important for the organization to recognize um, that those investments are paying off and, and keeping us on par uh, with the industry standards. And then I use it as well. If in any of those categories, we're not at a level uh, you know, against our peers that we would want to be or expect to be, it helps me set the stage for the future investments that the organization is going to make. And then you know, always tying that back, then when next year's award comes, you know, gee, remember when we invested in this technology, here's how it's helping us you know, uh, across these benchmarks. Um, and that's a, a very meaningful way to engage. And you know, I would say in just my most you know, recent conversation around this, um, it got enough attention that you know, uh, even our board level, uh, our boards of trustees uh, you know, have some interest. And so you know, I think it, for CIOs on the call and other you know, health IT leaders, uh, it is a, a very good way to engage and start the dialogue around what's expected. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So great, great inputs uh, from from both uh, Lisa and Craig. So we have some audience questions. So remember, we are live. You can ask uh, questions and we'll moderate those. We'll take them. We're not afraid. We're going to take them on, whatever you have out there for us. Uh, here's some tough ones that came in. Uh, the first one is, how does the uh, most wired roadmap align to health value? So uh, how do you make the case that this is important because you know that it leads to great clinical patient safety outcomes or what have you. Any That's for any of you, either of you. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. jump in first. Um, so the way, the nice thing about the, the most wired is, you're, is when you're done, you actually look at the organizations at the different levels, and then they look at the financial and the clinical outcomes that are produced. And there is a correlation between those that are in the top tiers of most wired and what your clinical outcomes and, and your financial performance. So in terms of the value of doing it and impacting the communities that you serve, there is a correlation with those investments in that piece. So it's really is a nice way to go back and look and see, and it's very prescriptive. So you, you can see where certain items will impact certain goals that you might have on your scorecard as a healthcare system. And as you start to drive toward moving yourself up the bar on those, you'll see the outcomes uh, changing dramatically. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just add, you know, I, I think it, it, again, is that opportunity for the CIO or, or health IT leader to, to draw that correlation, that um, not only are we meeting this industry standard and roadmap, but tying it directly back to how it is allowing us to achieve the organization's overall objectives and strategies, whether that be in you know new patient acquisition or the patient experience, the safety and quality of the care that we provide, um, you know, uh, helping, uh, you know, our colleagues in the, the C-suite and elsewhere understand how the technology is supporting those endeavors and that it's based in this, you know, industry benchmark process that sort of creates the how uh, and then translating it to what IT is delivering for the organization. No, that's great. So it's just a quick summary before we move to the next section of 
practical application. But what you, with the common themes I'm just hearing is you're being transparent to the organization. Hey, here, here's where we are. We might be level, whatever level it is. It's a transparency. You're holding yourself accountable. Like, hey, mm -hmm. we're going to move up this. You know, we're going to uh, perform better. Uh, and it gives you sort of a third party report card, if you will. There's a lot of benefits, especially when it comes to the correlation between financial and clinical benefits. Uh, Craig and Lisa, you both uh, talked about and really the whole why and then how to get the C-suite engaged. So really awesome uh, material there. So if you don't do that already, I think what you're hearing from Lisa and Craig is uh, start talking about it with your senior executives and uh, start building a plan around it, reporting on it, things like that. Okay, so how do you rally your teams? So how do you get them to be excited about Most Wired? Like you you are because for obvious reasons and, and the, the things that you just talked about, but uh, how do you rally your teams to be also sort of focused on most wired, not again, because that you're trying to achieve an award, but because you know that there's this correlation to outcomes. Yeah, everyone. I think it's exactly that, Ed. You know, it, it starts with the, why are we here, right? Um, you know, we, we come to work every day to improve the care uh, of the communities that we serve, uh, tying that directly to our work. Um, and, you know, there is pride then uh, through the work. And, um, you know, I think, that's a, a powerful incentive for the team. Um, and the that public badge of honor that the Most Wired Award brings, uh, you know, gives them that that visibility uh, to their work and why it's important. So um, it's been an easy, you know, conversation internally. To your point, it doesn't start with we're trying to win an award. It starts with we're doing important work. Here's a structure that can help us achieve that uh, and understand how we're doing, you know, compared to the industry uh, and then it, there's a nice recognition of that work through the award in the end yeah i love how you said that lisa and you know there is a level or a level of competitiveness in pretty much every yeah. one of <laughs> us and so as you kind of rally your troops for example part of that is to show how you are and where the people might be in the industry that you'd like to be or be like and to really kind of set that bar for the organization to move forward with it and, you know, a lot of our work is what we do is we are here to support and to serve other parts of the organization. Very little work do we actually receive in IT or in DS, digital services, the benefit from. This allows us some kind of point of measurement. You know, it has an end. So we can kind of see how we want to progress and have that discipline to accomplish something. And it's in our DNA, you know, to go ahead and have a very methodical way to work through achieving goals and accomplishments. And then once you're done, it restarts and the bar is higher, which is really a nice way to have continuous improvement because it's a journey. You know, when you look at the scale and you look at how it's moving, it's don't expect to jump in the first time and be a top tier. It's something that works in it over time. So it really gives you the opportunity to continue to engage year after year with your team. So, Craig, along those lines, I know you SEL has just been two years, so you might uh, need to reference your former experience. But where were you and where are you now? So I guess we'll stick with SEL. Uh, maybe not as much has changed in two years, but just curious, what level are you, uh, where were you when you got there and where are you now? And what did you do? If you've moved up, what did you do to move up? Well, the interesting part is when I got here, uh, we didn't know where we were because we didn't fill it out for two years. It was like, okay, <laughs> where are we? So we did it the first year here and we earned a level eight. So that was how we progressed over that year to get to level eight. And this past year, we shot to a level nine. And our goal is to be at a level 10. We really believe being in the top decile performance nationally is where we want to be and where we want to compete. In the previous life, it, in the evolution of the award, you know, you were kind of had a top 100 for the first several years, and then you kind of made the list because so many people participated. Then they had distinctions, you know, most advanced, and so that, you know, we earned that. And now I think it's very, very solid. It's simple. It's understandable. It's something that those, as Lisa referenced, your board and other senior leaders can comprehend because you don't have all the other pieces to it. And it's really found itself at a very nice place. And, and moving that forward, we really is something that we start out with. So we look at the different ones and the most wired for me kind of bubbles toward the top because it's the most comprehensive. And also, again, it has that digital focus, which is where we're moving. Mm -hmm. Lisa, same question to you. And you've been 25 years uh, at uh, Yale New Haven. So uh, tell us uh, sort of where you started, if you could remember, and uh, where you are now and what you did to 
fill that gap. Yeah, it's funny. I was uh, telling Craig earlier, we just moved our office space. And so I was packing up all of our most wired awards. I found one, I think back to 2002 or 2003. Um, so, uh, you know, longtime participant, uh, you know, I think the, the scale has changed over the years. My clearest recollection, uh, you know, as I moved into the, the CIO role, we were at a, a level seven or eight. Uh, we've now been uh, a level nine. And like Craig, you know, uh, Aspire, as soon as we got the level nine notice, I, I went straight to my team and said, let's start talking about what it takes to get to level 10. Um, and so, you know, there is that little bit of competition, I think, too. But, um, you know, it, it it is a journey. And I would just advise everyone on the call, don't be daunted by that. You know, I, I think, that whole concept of it being a roadmap is just that. And, and it gives you that framework and know that with some investment and the engagement that we talked about of your executive leaders, you will move uh, you know, along that pathway and that journey with you know, Chime's mission around the award to, to use the technology to better serve our patients. And so um, I, I can't say enough about you know, that, the structure that, that it provides, but no, it's a that, journey. Yeah, definitely a journey. So uh, let me double back on uh, something related a little bit to a previous uh, comment, only because we had a question around that, and it, it and it it will add additional, you know, some roadmap or not roadmap, but some practical things that you can do. So it's a uh, this is specific to Craig, but Lisa, you also mm -hmm. uh, can take a stab at this. How have you used the award in communicating to key stakeholders like physicians? and how it impacts them. So again, on a practical side of things, you know, what did you do to communicate? And this is from a former colleague of yours at Atrium. Yeah, well, certainly you know, the way that this, this works is you have to have them involved to actually fill out the survey. So you've got to get with your business leaders on the revenue cycle side, your clinical leaders um, on the clinical side, and, and really that's how you kind of fill it out and work towards it. So in terms of communicating back and forth, they're part of this actual the, the the test itself. So from that standpoint, you just celebrate it together. You really need to bring people together and to say, hey, here's what we've earned as a system. Again, it's not an IT award; it's a system award. So bring in the clinical leaders, let them know that we are, you know, uh, most wired and the level that we are. And there's also distinctions between ambulatory and acute care, mm -hmm. and also as an IDN. So there's also different aspects even within that most wired component. So to earn all those going all the way across the board and be high on the level is really something that's kind of fun to share with. And, and you know, you, you enjoy and celebrate all these things together. And then like we talked before, then you, the next day it's time to move forward. Right. <laughs> Lisa? Yeah, I would just add, you know, I, I think it is a great way to engage your colleagues in the conversation about what's, what's important to them, how can your IT and digital services help them achieve their business goals. Uh, again, tying it back to the construct that Most Wired provides is helpful, uh, but it, it really is just a great opportunity to start to understand where their priorities lie and how you can you know, help move your organization forward together. Uh, and then to Craig's point, absolutely, it's a celebration of the organization's efforts. Yeah, and that, that's a whole other practical thing, is if I summarize really quick, and that is include, don't do it as an IT thing, but you included others in that process, because uh, they're the knowledge experts anyways, to answer a lot of those questions. But yeah, and then you include them, it's just, it, there's a lot of very positive benefits uh, when you do that. And certainly when you win the award, you know, or get the recognition, it is a shared experience. So we are down to about five minutes. We love questions. So feel free to ask, probably have more, uh, time for one or two more questions that are Reformed in there, so don't hesitate if you have questions. Very unique opportunity to talk to two of the leaders in the country from CIOs and what they've done with Most Wired. So, Craig and Lisa, you, you both are now maturing organizations or very mature organizations, and you're mature leaders. But let's just say you decided that you wanted to try to go in a rebuild mode. So realize you're you're level nine, ten. You're you're very you know there's not, very few organizations there. The average is you know somewhere in the middle. And let's just say you went to an average. So, you know, assuming a lot of our audience, right, they're they're not level nine or 10 yet. They're, they're somewhere mm -hmm. below that. So you went to an organization where you were level six. What, what are some of the first steps that you might take to sort of get towards that maturity of a, of a level nine, like where you are today or a level 10? You know, so you're a new leader in a new organization. 
uh, that's not as mature, what would you do? You know, yeah, again, um, I think, look, go, go ahead, ahead go ahead, Lisa. no, please. Okay, uh, you know, I, I would say, I would probably, again, start with that, that two-way dialogue, right? Um, you know, using where we are and the award criteria as that gap analysis, but then very much engaging uh, my, my fellow leaders in the organization around where their key priorities are. And so aligning the investments and the, and the move forward uh, in a way that helps the organization move itself forward and helping folks see how investing in the technology and digital can help them do that. And you can't do it all at once. And so, you know, that's where I do think that that dialogue around aligning the priorities is important. And then that iterative process of helping them see how the investments are, are paying off and continuing to build on that as you go forward. Yeah, what, what I would add is, you know, that, that I, I love what Lisa says again, is, is really take a look at, you know, do the baseline on the very first year, figure out where exactly where you're at and, and reach out, network, you know, contact Lisa, contact me, contact Ed, contact anybody that's in the eight, nine or 10 or whatever you feel the next aspiration should be. Because as an industry, we would love it if everybody was a nine and a 10, taking our technology and our digital investments and really upping the game and improving the outcomes financially and clinically for our industry, it, it would be great. I so it's that. not something that you really want to uh, compete against. It's really something we all want to promote and help each other out. So I would, I would say, you know, reach out to people and when you see the organizations that are at certain levels, they will reach back and uh, and help them help you. And then at some point, I'm sure they'll be asking you to do the same favor to them in this space or some other space. Yeah, that, I love our our family of CIOs. Everyone is so collegial, uh, always willing to help each other out. Uh, final question in how do you actually operationalize this in terms of doing the survey? So do you have, again, trying to be practical for others, do you have one person who's in charge of coordinating and then how soon do you prepare? Is it, you know, how, just how do you do it? So Lisa, maybe start with your team. Like, how do you do it? Is there someone assigned and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I have a point person from our project management office uh, who's done it for years. So she's very familiar with the survey itself. She knows who her key contacts are uh, to go out and, and get the information that she needs. And then a group of, uh, you know, my senior team and I review the responses before it goes in to be sure, you know, we, we didn't miss anything or get trapped into, sometimes they, they fill it out the same way they did last year. And we're like, no, we made this big change that, that moved our score. Um, so um, it, it starts with that process uh, and, and assignment to a coordinator. That's been very helpful. Okay, Craig, yeah, what about you? Two are here as well. Um, having one person coordinated, they break it into, you know, digestible parts and send that out to several people for each one of them, and they accumulate it, accumulate it back together. We meet as a group, agree at where everything is at, and then we submit. And if I can just, if I can just add, on ChimeCentral.org, you can print the PDF, and that's really helpful to print out and to work from that within your organization. We also highlight every single change that was made from year to year, so that, as Lisa said, you don't get caught in the you know, what changed and, and what's different and the progress that you've made as well. So as we wrap up, uh, Craig, Lisa, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll end with uh, both of you, you know, any anything else, uh, open forum here, any other uh, piece of advice that you might give to others that may not be at your level today in terms of level nine or 10? Uh, yeah, I, I would, would just say, say if, oh, you nope. gave me last time, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the only thing I would say is um, if you haven't done it, please do it. Uh, figure out where you're at. And then if you have done it, and in this case, you would have, well, reach out. Reach out to people to uh, help you out and to help you organize and help you kind of move it forward because we all want us, again, as an industry, to raise our game. Lisa? Yeah, I was just going to say if we keep the patient as our true north, uh, this provides uh, a roadmap to keep us moving forward in the right direction. So encourage folks to take a look and use it if you haven't. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Craig and Lisa, for sharing your wisdom with everyone. Uh, it's been fantastic. We got some other feedback uh, from, from some participants. So uh, thank you. Uh, Michelle, I wanted to le let you finish. Uh, how do people get most wired information and participate? Yeah, absolutely. You can go to 
uh, chimecentral.org. There's a digital health most wired tab. You can click on that and it gives you all the information starting with the PDF. And then uh, most wired at chimecentral.org is the email and we can send you a, a link to get into the survey. Awesome. Again, thank you everyone. Thank you for our audience for joining us and uh, have a great weekend. See you all. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks everyone. Bye.